Welcome to SoCal Cyclist Podcast, episode number 44, the podcast that brings you the people and practice of the Peloton. We have eight more episodes to go until we hit episode 52. And when I started this whole thing, it was one year, 52 weeks, 52 guests, and I think I'm going to hit that goal. So um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm so glad to have done this. I am going to take a small break, though rebuild the podcast, rebuild the brand, give listeners time to catch up on old episodes that they never got to, and then season two will even be better than season one. Uh, Joining me today is my friend Mackenzie. Mackenzie, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. So uh, what do you do in the world of cycling? Uh, Well, I am the current president of SDSU Cycling, uh, the collegiate club we have over there. Um, I started out uh, with mountain biking. Uh, I grew up in a cycling family. They got me involved in mountain biking, and I joined my high school's uh, mountain bike team, went through the whole NICA program, then uh, found uh, cyclocross with SoCal Cross, and then uh, once I got into school at SDSU, I joined SDSU Cycling, and I've been doing mountain bike, road, playing around on the track, and I've just been getting into road cycling so everything except for bmx right yeah essentially (laughs) (laughs) that's so cool and what's funny mackenzie is a lot of the past guests on the show came from collegiate racing who are now pro Mm -hmm. but what's cool is like you're in the middle of it you're in the thick of it you're you're you run a cycling team you're president of the cycling team (laughs) which is like a whole job in and of itself oh yeah and to kind of see someone and talk to someone who's currently in it uh, it, it brings an interesting perspective. So, um, are, have you raced collegiate nats? Um, I have actually, uh, my freshman and sophomore year. And actually I believe my, uh, junior year, my third year, I'm in my fifth year now, but, um, when cyclocross nationals was in Madison, Wisconsin mm-hmm. and Boulder, and then in Austin, I raced in the collegiate category. Um, mm-hmm. I did. I placed like probably midfield, mm-hmm. nothing too impressive, but I went out and did it. And I was actually the only uh, collegiate cyclist from the Western Collegiate Cycling Conference. Um, but now we were actually able to create some sort of actual cycling, I mean, cyclocross uh, season mm-hmm. uh, in preparation for Reno. Um, yeah, no, Reno's Re, Reno's had mountain bike nationals there as well yeah. years ago. Um, that's so cool that you went to Nats. I mean, yeah. the national collegiate nationals is basically a pro race. Yeah. I mean, the people in it, it's that fast. And the people winning collegiate nationals mostly go on to pro anyway. So um, it's cool that, that you did that. What are your uh, what are your cycling plans for uh, after college? What are you going to what are you going to do with the sport? Um, well, I, I personally plan on working on my upgrades in road cycling. Um, hopefully this collegiate season, I can make it to, uh, collegiate road nats. And then after that, I'd like to have a strong road season, um, to try to I don't know, improve my goal is to get to cat two, um, hopefully by the end of the season or next season. Um, and then I'd like to continue on with cyclocross and get ready for Reno. Yes. Well, we in SoCal are kind of, you know, SDSU is kind of our home school. I mean, sure, there's UCLA and, uh, you know, UCSD, of course. But uh, with SDSU, with such a large student body and you're, you guys are restructuring, um, mm-hmm. it, it's really cool to see that kind of develop. Well, that's great. Well, let's go ahead and get into uh, listener mail. And this one comes from Facebook. Uh, Mackenzie, take it away. Yeah, so this is from Shano Scott. Um, He says, commenting on uh, the coffee shop picture from this morning, 20 minutes on Kreitler Boulevard, a.k.a. Rollers, while listening to your Ivan podcast. If you've never seen Jamie Pellinetti Pro, uh, check it out. Dominguez is in there. Uh, one of my favorite DVDs. Thanks for the tip on Hunker. I'm in. Hope it doesn't rain. 
And yes, on that Eddie Merckx interview. Man, this guy, this guy is a, uh, he's definitely a fan of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for writing in. Uh, yeah, Hunker, great event coming up. Uh, also, uh, Jamie Polinetti is a legend in uh, U.S. road cycling and, and does documentary films as well as plays. And then, yeah, if Eddie Merckx still wants to uh, come and do the podcast, there's an open seat ready for you, Eddie, if, if you want to do that. So if you want to write in, I'm at brian at socalcyclist.org. You can also reach me on social media. Instagram is at socal underscore cyclist. Uh, Facebook is a SoCal Cyclist podcast, and then you can go to SoCalCyclist.org to check out all the cool stuff. Um, we love to hear back from you. Um, most important thing is to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Your reviews on iTunes is what helps keep the show alive. So um, thank you so much for doing that. And you only have eight more episodes to write in, so you better get to it if you haven't, if you haven't done it by now. The good news is, let's go ahead and transition. It is contest time, right. and we've got uh, we've got a really good one. So it's been a while since we've done the last uh, Instagram giveaway, and this one I think you might want to pay attention to because this one's pretty big. Mackenzie, what do you have sort of in your hand? She has a uh, she has a you know box wrapped in paper, so. and she's literally unwrapping it as we go. So one lucky listener is going to get whatever is inside wrapped in this paper. And what do we have, Mackenzie? It's a uh, Cyclic uh, rear flasher. Um, and this is really cool because it's got a camera uh, built in. So, you know, just in case you're out there on the road, something happens. Uh, You've got video footage of it, and that's um, that's a, you can get like an HD video from this. Uh, yeah, video recording and audio, up to six hours, rechargeable USB, so you can be out there, super long hundred mile ride, whatever. Right, and that's it's, it's so cool. You have these things are basically I've I've talked about these before in the podcast, uh, but it's our first time giving it away to to a listener. They're not cheap. These these are all the way from Australia, and uh, you know when it most people should be riding with a light anyways. This takes it up a notch by riding with a light as well as a camera that just runs continuously. And then when you're done with the ride, if nothing happened, if it was uneventful, uh, then it erases itself. But if something did happen, God forbid, uh, you've got something on there to track it, so to speak. And they make front ones, but the rear one is, is a very popular option that a lot of people uh, tend to use on their bikes. And it just attaches right to your uh, rear seat post. So um, the, again, the brand is Cyclic. Uh, it's a 720p action camera. They corrected me when I was on the phone with them. I was like, Cyclic. And they're like, no, it's Cyclic. Uh, so Cyclic, uh, it's called the Fly 6. Check them out at Cyclic.com. And uh, hey, Mackenzie, what would you, um, what do you think people have to do in order to attain one of these things for free? Well, you just need to take a photo, a ride photo, um, and add a hashtag uh socal cyclist podcast, podcast. yeah yes. good job okay cool she's doing this all on the fly by <laughs> the way i'm putting her on the spot <laughs> um and also tag a friend um in the post um and what else what else is there i think um, that's it so yeah i think you hit it all no follow follow, follow. on uh, social media yeah, so on follow instagram socal cyclist podcast yeah and then take a ride pick, but be safe. I don't want people like dangling off the edge of something just to get a picture. <laughs> be, especially since we're giving out one of these cameras. Be safe and then use hashtag SoCalCyclistPodcast. Tag a friend, of course. Get more people to uh, listen. Give them a chance to win. Uh, and this is such a cool prize. It's This is the only thing we're giving out. Um, and it's going to be not a long duration. It's going to be short because we only have a few podcasts left and more things to, to give away. So I am excited on the podcast for this contest. Are you excited? Yeah, this is awesome. I'll have to share this with the SDSU cycling team. Oh, yeah. 
And then, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. I'll also have a review up on the SoCalCyclist.org website for you to check out. Um, but I've tested these things before, and they work great. And it's, it's hard to imagine a life without these. But in the world we live in today, it's good to have an extra set of eyes. Um, well, great. So, Mackenzie, I am excited about this next guest because this guest was a product of collegiate cycling and... They kind of started out like you did. They started out racing, I think, at nine years old. Oh, and yeah. then um, has basically stuck with cycling and now is at cycling at the highest level. Um, her name is Corinne Rivera. And are you familiar with her? I, I am. Um, through uh, SoCal Cross down here, with, through the cycling, um, cyclocross scene, actually. Um, uh, just, I know she's been around. She's definitely raced a few of the cyclocross races at some point. Um, but yeah, like I, she's definitely someone that I like follow on social media and I definitely look up to. Um, so this is, I'm really excited to hear this one. Yeah. And she raced for Marion university, which is a sm very small school, mm -hmm. but in terms of collegiate cycling, you always see their names yeah. at the very top, especially at collegiate Nats. And, um, what's cool about Corinne is she, I think at the same time was right racing for United healthcare, which is one of the top teams in the country. And then she got picked up by Sunweb, which is a world tour level team. Um, it's the team formerly known as Giant Alpacin. Um, she's on the women's team there and racing in Europe, and we wish her luck in the upcoming 2017 season. Um, she's known as a sprinter, um, so she definitely likes to win in a bunch, but she's becoming more of an all-around racer, which is always important. Mackenzie, what are you? Are you a sprinter? Or are, you, or are you more of a climber? Um, or I, guess, I guess I might consider myself more of... A climber like endurance kind of cyclist mm -hmm. um, and I definitely am someone who like I kind of pride myself on my handling and skills ability from mountain biking and cyclocross um, so yeah definitely more of a I think a climber <laughs> so for road like you look forward to the descents after a climb uh yeah I guess <laughs> definitely a rest for me but because I'm so small like I don't really carry as much speed so I need to um, typically like I, if I can get away on the climb, that's always the goal, but like, I'd like to be part of a group for the descents. How tall are you? I'm only about like 4'11". 4'11". Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, hey, that's also the size of like Nairo Quintana. So, you know, <laughs> you could be a future Grand Tour winner one day. So, so don't <laughs> count it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. And then also, um, yeah, she, um, Corin, she's, she's amazing. She's super focused, comes from Orange County, not too far from, you know, these parts. And, uh, she's somebody who has grown up in SoCal and now she's on the world's biggest stage. So, um, we wish her luck. Let's go ahead and get into episode number 44 with Corinne Rivera. <laughs> 